Welcome to the football show on <coughs> ELZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Um, Alan Ruff is with me. Um, you can tell because he coughed just as we actually opened the show. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy <laughs> Maris is this here as well. He's having a beer today, isn't he? It's unbelievable. Uh, Ruffy's here with us, it's and of the course, Japan Spain light. game. Yeah. Hand, the we, the need, we need to mean a red light and a green light. Hey, do you want me to tell you something? It would make air. a slightest bit of difference <laughs> for you. Um, anyway, Ruffy's here. Uh, if in spirit only uh, alongside Tam McManus and thank you to you for, for sticking <laughs> with us um, uh, over the years because we're getting mightily close Ruffy as I look at things here we are uh, 10 days away from um, 10 years exactly yes. 10 years exactly that must be an night out surely <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. It's on the tenth, um, but it's absolutely incredible that we're it ten is. years wow. together. It's incredible, isn't it? Is I mean, I didn't know you as well then. We just got together. Out, but it was just strangely you that suggested it. Yeah, but I mean, if you cast your mind back uh, a long time ago, there was a moment that might never have happened when uh, you had a uh, disgruntled uh, argument with one of the owners and left and said, "I'm never coming back again." And I had to go and find you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Tell us more. No, no. Can I go to half a no, no, no. just say something to you? Can I just say something? You've, you've been, he, he's actually he's excelling. He just embellished that story and accelerated no, it never. beyond the point. No, I never. This is the point. <laughs> ten years ago we started. Yeah. You know, but uh, ten years of teething films at the start. Of here, <laughs> you get me? I was like a coiled spring with him. <laughs> um, but of course, yeah, yeah, we had um, we had a great idea do the programme, we were really motoring and then, is it fair to say Ruffy, there's the odd person who senses they're onto a good thing and try to yes. sabotage it. Yes, I won't go into details but obviously yeah. he was getting ripped. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so some... he says, I'm taking no more of this, I'm off. <laughs> yeah. And as you know, when he's off, <laughs> he's off. He's off. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, God, I forgot all about that, Ruffy. Um, people who used to annoy the life out of us. And uh, I have to say, after 10 years with you now, um, I've certainly calmed down a lot since the early years, but we still enjoyed our football. We've been all over the place. And as the programme has got bigger and the, the station, as far as PLZ Soccer's got bigger, Geez, we've been out doing Champions League, Tam, this yep. 10 years. I mean, great at Liverpool. That was a great night we had. Oh, brilliant. It was, I think that's... It wasn't something. a great night for Rangers, but it was... No, a it, was, it was a great night for us in hospitality, to be honest. <laughs> 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 yeah, regardless of the result, we had we, a great time down there. And uh, no, I, I think that's something that obviously in the future... It'd be great to do more of those games and yeah. um, to, to, to tune into the, the Champions League or the Europa League games. Absolutely, we will be doing a, a lot of that. Thanks to so many of you who joined us. Catherine as well. Uh, afternoon guys from sunny Spain. We wish we were there with you, Catherine, to be honest with you. Um, and hi to Matt. Um, <laughs> who's wondering whether we're live. Um, every now and then we've got uh, some difficult uh, choices to make, Ruffy. We've got commitments. It's very rare that we actually pre-record a show. No, no, I don't think uh, yeah. we have. More often than not, we're yes. always live. And hi to uh, uh, Derek uh, McCrory, who's in Tokyo. Have we had oh. Tokyo before? To Derek, tell Derek I've been watching Tokyo Vice. It's so fantastic. Are. Is it so good? Are. Oh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Good. Yeah, uh, I, thought, I watched the first episode. For yeah. And thanks to James Skeen who says, "Well done, ten years." Um, and tax tax dodger. What a name for <laughs> what a name for somebody. A happy Friday, uh, you bunch of maniacs. And I think that sums it up uh, with this whole team here. Uh, listen, Just looking, we're really bought into Black Friday, haven't we? We have, haven't we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, I, I can tell you that uh, we've got uh, lots of things coming up that I think you're really going to enjoy. Not only the competitions that we've got ongoing, but we've got one-to-ones coming up that are really special uh, and lots of other unique video content. And as we say, uh, moving forward, it's absolutely free to watch. It's uncensored, unbiased, unmatched uh, football news and banter as well that you get not only on the show, but if you download the app, you'll get all the breaking football news too. Lots of things that we're really looking forward to uh, telling you about. And thank you to so many of you who um, basically follow the show from near and far. Uh, good afternoon, says John Doherty from Cornwall. And I think that's the first time I've ever read out Cornwall as a place. 
uh, Beautiful so many. place. I think so, I think the the strength of our, our program is very much um, in Scotland, but expats, Tam, who just want yeah. a wee flavour of. By the way, I'm missing the trips. I want a wee bit of a, a laugh and a wee bit of opinion. I've got I've got a few friends over in Georgia. Uh, big John Murphy, uh, coach. If you remember, he was at Livingston for a wee while. I give him a mention. He watches the show every day. Uh, I've got relatives in Canada who watch the show yeah. on catch up. So. There's a lot of people that I know uh, tuning into the show, probably maybe on catch up because it's a bit early for them. I think we're getting a lot of places now where we can go and holiday off. We're mm-hmm. starting to just put little pins in places where people oh, have got houses, you know. The road shows not that far away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, I can tell you we've got the ongoing situation where we've got a competition uh, with our friends at Fandex, and it's a great competition. It's a- absolutely free to play, um, and all you have to do is you know know a little bit about stocks and shares. In countries uh, that are playing in the World Cup and you can invest in them and sell the shares when you feel they've reached their peak and then go in and buy another country. It doesn't matter what stage you join it at, you can still join it now and win cash prizes at the end of each stage. I'll let uh, Adam tell you a bit more about it. Come and join PLZ Soccer on Fandex for our FIFA World Cup 2022 Stock Exchange game. It's absolutely free to play and you have the chance to win cash prizes. You can buy shares in your favourite team and watch their stock price increase or decrease based on their real-life World Cup performances against the expected points tally set by Fandex. You can buy and sell as many teams as you like, as often as you like, with winners being announced after every round. The PLZ Soccer family are waiting for you on Fandex. Head to plzsoccer.com and click on Fandex World Cup 2022. And here we are back. Thanks to Adam for telling us about that. Um, uh, thanks also to uh, Dell, who says, I'm going to get on that Tokyo programme that you were talking about. Space, so yeah. cheers, Ruffy, he says. Um, also, somebody says, can I have a hello for my son Ronan? Uh, and that's from Eamon. So Ronan, if you're out there, we are delighted, Ronan, that you are watching the show. And you can have two other people who say hi to you. Ruffy, you, you would say a big hello. Yes, Ronan. Uh, Ronan, we don't know if he's a footballer or if he plays plays football but uh, all the best Ronan yeah he's a Stick football in. fan yep. Tom. all the best Ronan yep see uh, that gives you an indication <laughs> that we're live yeah. <laughs> now I'll give you the quiz question uh, which player holds the record for the most goals scored at a World Cup final um, so we'll give you the answer by the end of the programme which player holds the record for scoring the most goals at the World Cup finals um, there's been a few who've scored <clears throat> you know a collective um, at one World Cup final I think Just Fontaine scored 13 but there's one player who is actually holding the World Cup record for all his appearances at the World Cup he's, he's the top goal scorer who is he? Okay, that in mind, got to talk World Cup, got to talk about last night, Japan 2, Spain 1, Costa Rica 2, Germany 4, effectively, it's absolutely amazing. The Germans, Ruffy, were 2-1 down at one point, I mean, I was in a bar in Edinburgh with a few um, (coughs) of my compadres when we were watching the two tellies, and... Also, um, you're thinking to yourself, Germany 2-1 down. At one point, Spain and Germany were going out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's been the disappointing thing about the World Cup. The the big teams are getting, you know, eliminated, which is making England's route a wee bit easier than uh, it usually would be. But uh, England's still got to go out and do it. But yeah, I I think Germany, you know, never came into it, you know, in, in top form, but it is a bit puzzling these results you know these smaller nations are taking points out of the big ones yeah I mean Germany hit the post three times uh, <coughs> they knew what they had to do they had to try and win obviously if they'd won by a cricket score it might have changed things dramatically but they still won in the end and then they realise what's happened elsewhere and that's the second consecutive tournament and for all that feeling of the Germans are always there or thereabouts at the latter end of tournaments that's gone now because I think there are other countries now that really are you know bridging that gap yeah I think they've got nobody to blame by themselves I think I mean you look at that group I think to take four points out is disappointing for the Germans I think the the Japan game obviously is a big one if they take a point off of Japan then, then they go through but you know losing to Japan just put them right behind it and um, listen they got a great result last night beat Costa Rica but Unfortunately for them, Spain get beat, who nobody would have first seen in Japan. You know, lost to Costa Rica and beat Spain in Germany. So if you're a bookie, I think you're loving this World Cup because there has been so many shock results. Uh, and that was another one last night, Japan beating Spain. Yeah, what about Mitoma's cut back? I mean, I'm looking at it, even first time around I said, that's out. I mean, yeah. I don't know how, 
even if he comes up with there's a chip in the ball, I'm still looking at it, Tam, and I think it's out. Well, they've obviously got the technology, haven't they? Uh, at FIFA and, and the VAR room, and they've seen it. What obviously, did you think? I thought initially it was the ball was out, but I think when you look at the angles, and there was a lot of stuff on social media last night, you know, perception of the ball, when you look at it from this angle, yeah. um, you look at it straight down, and I think if they had the straight down one right away, then it would have, a lot of people would have thought that, you know the ball was still in, but they didn't have that angle, and it led to a lot of conjecture on social media. But because the whole ball has to be out, the whole b ball has to be out, and, it, and <laughs> it's clearly not the whole ball is not out. It's only maybe a couple of millimeters it's still in, but you can't see any any grass between it when you look straight down on it. So they got there's, they got it right in the end. But if you're a German fan and you go out because of that, you're you're sick this morning. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, Ruffy, you know only too well, um, the Germans mm -hmm. ended up with, what, four points? Mm -hmm. And they'll go home with the same feeling that, you, that yeah. you, the, well, they'll be getting pelters when they go back. Yeah, they certainly will, but they're, they're not just getting pelters for that game, they're getting pelters for all the games. You yeah. know, they haven't they haven't performed at all, you know, and uh, you would think, I would think, with, with the best goalkeeper in the blinking tournament, Neuer, and he's up the road. Yeah. You know, I think uh, you want to see these kind of players going right to the end, but no, they were disappointing, you know, and uh, they're going through a phase just now. Yeah, and Tax Dodger says the Germans uh, done my lining against Japan, 78 quid. It's, there's nothing <laughs> worse. You. There's nothing worse. When you look at that result, and you look at Saudi Arabia beating Argentina, and Australia <laughs> beating Denmark, and Australia going through and Denmark finishing bottom. It's, it's been a re there's been some real upsets. No, it's not. I mean, I'm not saying they are doing it. But could you actively try and work out where you finish in a group when you know what's coming? First or second? <coughs> Do you think these well, teams... Well, can I just say roughly? Spain, Spain, yeah. Spain, yeah, I think Spain, Spain, Spain yeah. have got, uh, Morocco now, so if they won the group, they get Croatia. I don't think I don't think you could go I don't think you could go out and do that, you know. I think I think Morocco. I think we've seen it before in previous World Cups. Yeah, we have, I it was just the way the results were. I mean I mean they're Costa Rica could beat seven on, you know, and then they're winning two nothing against Germany. And it's just you feel it a bit somebody's at it here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ruffy, are you the German trying to throw the game? Out of curiosity. You said, You've had the worst week ever on yeah. this programme. Yeah, I know. I just have to yeah. say that. And and the suggestion that there's somebody at, is at it is so wide of the market defies belief. Um, anyway, uh, thanks to so many people who are talking about um, the, the, the games, the goals. If anything, when you look at the World Cup and you see Germany home, Belgium home, it was a team that were, you know, basically lauded for their football, the quality of players that they had. Uh, they were the golden generation of Belgian football and everybody thought at some point they would deliver a trophy. This was their moment over the last, what, um, um, would it be fair to say the last six or seven years you actually thought there's something brewing there and it never materialised. Yeah, it's disappointing I think for them when you look at the players all coming through at the same time. You know, Lukaku, De Bruyne, Hazards, you know, they're a real top squad. Uh, Courtois, you know, the, the two centre-backs, uh, uh, Toby Abawerad and uh, Vertonghen. You know, so they, they've, got a, they've got a great squad of players, but I think they've missed the boat. I think the, the real chance for them is maybe the last World Cup or, or the Euros when they're all at their peak. And uh, sadly now, they, they looked an ageing team, particularly against Canada in the first game, where I don't know how they won the game, but even yesterday, they, they've not got any zip about them. Uh, you know, and De Bruyne has been... Very, very poor. Yeah. I mean, you look how good he is at Man City. He's been so <coughs> disappointed. He looks as if he's, a, he's in a huff, you know, with the, with the squad or the manager or whatever. He, he didn't kick a ball in the tournament, and that's d disappointing as well because a lot of people would have, would have fancied him to, to light this tournament up. Yeah, I think a lot of people in Belgium will look again very critically on the camp, the stories, the yeah. unrest, suggestions of fallouts. Uh, the manner of their play, their star player opening his gob and saying they were too old. I think all of that contributed. Yeah, that's what happens when when you're knocked out and you're not doing well. You know, all these things surface and uh, somebody's got to answer uh, the questions that are getting thrown out there that the media obviously will be asking. But I, I agree with Tam, they're just a, a year or two too late now. You can see all the other teams, they look as if they're, they're progressed. And another thing I've noticed as well, that the smaller countries, the, the African nations, who have been to a World Cup before, they're experiencing it a lot more now 
they're, they're buying in. They've been here, we've been here. We don't feel uncomfortable and, and they're playing very, very well. Yeah, well, let's have a look and see, test your theory on that. Here's Group A, first of all, uh, Ruffy. Um, there are groups that are completely and utterly finalised. Netherlands and Senegal. And we're going to talk about Senegal shortly because they're playing England on Sunday. That's Group A. Um, so... Ecuador and Qatar it just didn't live up to it it was a venue it was a, a country full of controversy for getting it in the first place and unfortunately for them I think only one goal to show for it Tom yeah I think they were the, they're the only nation I think in the whole tournament that's looked completely out of depth I think even other ones that, that picked up points here and there looked okay Saudi Arabia for example getting a great result against Argentina Iran you know, beating uh, Wales, so they're, they're the only they're the only nation for me that's looked completely out of depth and get no points. In Group B, um, no surprise that England are at the top, but I, I thought United States gave a good account of themselves. Tom Wales disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, you look at Wales, you know, aging team. You know, the two superstars never turned up. <coughs> now haven't played many, much football this season, but I think the United States are a wee bit of a dark horse for me. They've got they've got powers of energy and pace. And they've got that little bit of quality with, with Weir and Pulisic that Canada probably never had, but they had the same, you know, kind of athleticism. So I think that I think that would be a really, really good game. Uh, Holland against USA, you know, completely two different styles. Yeah. You know, passing team, you know, Holland. I think you know, high energy team USA. So, and I think that that's the same kind of draw that Argentina's in. You know, so. I think the USA could, could spring a wee upset against Holland. Yeah, um, and of course, in Group C, Ruffy, Argentina uh, top Poland uh, nicely tucked in behind them, although I think when I look at Poland and their contribution to that group, it was poor to say the least. I, I don't see them um, having anything more than one more game at, France, at the Cup because they're playing France. Yeah, but yeah. Argentina, for me, I, I still can't make up my mind, Ruffy, because... They look as if they're going through the gears now. A great draw. And I, absolutely, they've got a great draw. And I, I just thought Messi was just a joy to watch the other night there. But they, are, they, are, they have moved up a gear. They're, they're passing slick. The, the movement is fantastic. Their defence is pretty strong. There's no doubt about that. You know, and they've got Messi. You know, that, that's, that's the one. Messi's the one. He's like, remember the game we, we saw with Scotland and Croatia with Modric? control the whole game that's what he does he, he moves about you know effortlessly and, and just makes everybody come into the game and, and all, he just, all he needs to do is just practice his penalties yeah absolutely I don't think he's worried about that although I have to say Tam for a guy who when he's not involved in the action he's mastered the ability to walk about mm. and then he waits and he just walks into certain he's positions he's the only person to probably get away with it not he oh absolutely you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't see another player getting away with just Walking about, but he's so intelligent. He just he just drifts away, and defenders just take their eye off him and watch the ball. And before you know it, he's in behind you. You know he's he just he's we he's we change a pace. He's still got it. Um, he's un, un, unfortunate that night. Not he scored a couple of goals, but I think that Argentina the draws opened up lovely for them. You know they've got they've got Australia, and then they've got either Holland or, or USA, and then they could play Brazil in the semi final. So you, you couldn't have asked for a, for a better draw, uh, and particularly after losing the first game against Saudi Arabia, where. where you know, a lot of people writing them off. They're still in there with a chance. Yeah, France and uh, Group D. France at the top with Australia. I think great for the Socceroos, Tam, isn't it? That is that for me. That's the biggest shock of the tournament. And you know, I fancied Australia to get no points. Um, I thought that was a very, very tough group for them. You know, you've got France in there. You've got Denmark, who are top ten in the world. I think uh, and, and had a great recent record in, in big tournaments. So fair play to Australia, losing the first game to France and then beating Denmark and Tunisia. Fantastic, but I, I do think that they're. I do, I do think the journey will end against Argentina. Yeah, and if your country in Group E is Japan and Spain above Germany and Costa Rica, you're celebrating that. You're getting that frame drop, aren't you? You certainly are, and you can see the Japan supporters. I mean, that they're, they're, and, and every one of your man were in tears. You know, they just couldn't believe it happened as well. But certainly, you, you see the endeavour they put into the game and, and Maeda. I, I mean, we've also Maeda over here. What he puts into a game. You know, he's work rate and everything. He's maybe no scoring goals, but he's chasing people down. And that was, that epitomised that whole job. And he's side for me. Every one of them was was like a Maeda. Yeah. Whether you, they were defence or midfield or whatever, they just put in a shift. We did a TikTok um, little quick uh, assessment of where we thought all the groups were going to end. I didn't have Morocco at the top in Group F. Did you, Tom? <laughs> I didn't, know, But, uh, you know, you look at their squad uh, on paper, they've got some top players. 
Um, there's Ajax, they have got Hakimi who plays for PSG. They've got some top quality in there, and Croatia, Croatia have looked decent. Uh, Belgium, you know, I think it's unfortunate for Canada to finish with no points. I think they, I think they were a bit better than that, but they yes. were so naive. They didn't, you know, they, they didn't really defend as a team properly. And, and in the final third, they were they were far too excitable. As soon as they get near the goal, they were firing balls over the stadium. So, um, I think if you're a Canadian fan, you take a lot of heart from their performances, but they've just got to grow a little bit more uh, streetwise in big tournaments. Yeah, and and I I can't see past Brazil, Rafi. Well, for me, I mean, we all know the players they've got, you know, the skill they've got, and I, I don't think the Brazilian goalkeepers had a shot to, to save. Yeah. I don't think anybody's breached that defence, you know, and that shows you how strong they are. Well, they, they, they aren't usually strong in defence, but this time they are. Yeah, and the last one, which is still to be determined, along with that, that Brazil group there is Portugal, Ghana, um, and South Korea, along with Uruguay. Um, so there's there's a few twists and turns to come in that, I have to tell you. Um, but we'll discuss that probably um, on Monday once uh, we get into this knockout. Here's the last 16 uh, graphic with those games still to be determined. There will be by the, probably the time most of you have watched this programme. But as you can see, um, there you have it. Netherlands against the USA, Argentina, Australia, France, Poland, England, Senegal... Japan, Croatia, and then it's the winner of Group G plays the runner-up of Group H. It's Morocco, Spain, and the winner of Group H plays the runner-up of Group G. Senegal will take on <coughs> England on Sunday. The odds are eight to fifteen for England. Senegal at seven to one. The draw three to one over ninety minutes. Tam. Yeah, I think that again Senegal <coughs> got some, some quality players. Koulibaly at the back, uh, as I said, just signed for Chelsea, and they've got the IU brothers, uh, obviously playing England, so. One of them plays in England, so they've got some good players, but I just think that England will be will be too strong for them. Uh, I think they've got too much in the final third, but you never know in a one-off game, but you'd fancy England to beat them. Yeah, well, Man City's John Stones is keen to point out that most of the players who'll take to the field certainly don't want to be the latest of the big countries to be knocked out. That We definitely don't want to be one of those teams that um, takes anything for granted. Uh, doesn't respect the opposition in whatever form, and I think that we've uh, always done that, always shown teams respect no matter uh, what form they're in, what players they've got, and, um, you know, we'll continue doing that. Well, I, I think <clears throat> England can win against Senegal, mm -hmm. but I think that's that's the point where they get to the quarters, and I think that's their limit. Yeah, they're more likely going to bump into France in the quarterfinals, uh, and that that's a huge game. I think France have been very impressive so far. The rest is a lot of players uh, the other night, but it's interesting. I'm sp speaking about complacency there because I think there has been a wee bit of complacency with the bigger nations. For example, Argentina against Saudi Arabia. I thought it was. I thought Spain were complacent last night after scoring the first goal. <coughs> I thought they were just going to cruise it into the, into the next round, and there was a point. There was a point where it looked as if they could possibly go out if Costa Rica won. So. I think uh, I think the top the top nations will be tuned in, you know, want no want to be in the end of an upset. Yeah, okay. Um, that's the World Cup for you. You can give us your thoughts on that. If you want to get involved in a chance to win some fantastic retro shirts, well, uh, I'll let Kerry tell you about this great competition we're offering. PLZ Soccer has teamed up with her friends at Grieve Sports and Copa to offer you the fabulous chance to win one of these World Cup retro shirts if you enter our World Cup half-trick competition. All you have to do is tell us who you think will win the World Cup, finish top goal scorer and who will be declared player of the tournament. The person who gets all three correct will go into a draw to win one of six vouchers to choose their very own retro World Cup shirt from the Grieve Sports website. And if you don't get all three correct, then don't worry. You can still subscribe to our YouTube channel for a chance to win. To enter, simply submit your answers in the feed below and if you want to double your chances of winning, then make sure you subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. The winner will be announced on the day of the World Cup final. Good luck. Yeah, thanks to Kerry for that and good luck with that competition. We also have Fandex up and running as well for you to enter. Um, so, uh, from that to domestic issues and Celtic have announced that uh, Peter Lowell has uh, returned to a position of authority as a non-executive chairman, replacing Ian Bankier and this is what he had to say on his return. Um, 
As a lifelong Celtic supporter, it is a great privilege to be asked to take up the position of chairman, having already been part of our great club for nearly 18 years. Uh, these are exciting times uh, for the club and I look forward to contributing to the well-being and success of the club. Our objectives, as ever, will be to grow and further develop the club across all areas. Led by an excellent chief executive in Michael Nicholson, the club has a high-quality management team in place. I will be offering my support and guidance to the board and executive management management team to ensure that we continue to drive the club forward and protect and promote the interests of our fans. Well, no great surprise he is back. It was something that I mentioned would be absolutely a stonewall certainty. You got it right, Peter, he did. <laughs> well, when we were in the COVID, I said to you, he's coming back as chairman once uh, all the uh, Ferrari has died down over, I think, Let's not be about the bush here. You know, he was part of basically a chaotic season uh, that resulted in Celtic missing out in 10 in a row. Yes, he certainly did. And uh, for the first time in a long time, he was getting a wee bit of flack over that, uh, rightly or wrongly. Uh, and he obviously decided to step away. But he, he'd still been going to the games. He's still been there and he's still keeping in contact with everything that goes on. And even when he was there the first time, you know, he controlled practically the whole of Celtic. And I think he'll come back. And I think it's a big asset for Celtic football. Club. Yeah. Um, Dermot Desmond clearly uh, shares your view on that, Ruffy. Uh, this is what he had to say. I'm delighted that Peter has agreed to take up the position of chairman. He is the outstanding candidate. Peter is a man of the highest quality someone who has served the club already with real commitment. He is perfectly placed to work with Michael Nicholson, Chris Mackay and the board to ensure we continue to compete in Scottish and European football and to manage the challenges and opportunities in a European context. I would also like to thank Ian Bankier for his excellent contribution to Celtic over a number of years. I join everyone at the club in wishing him and his family every success for the future. So, uh, suddenly... <clears throat> you've got that team, that board, that all really work like a well-oiled machine as far as um, how to keep Celtic, um, you know, in a profitable situation. It's the most prudent board. You can't argue. I mean, apart mm -hmm. from the real pain of the ten in a row season for many Celtic fans, you can't argue with the record. No, you can't, and you can't argue with the you know the financial records that they brought in year after year at Celtic, even through a tough period in COVID. You know, they were still turning over much, turning over profit and, you know, you're, Ruffy's right. I think that the fact that Celtic lost 10 in a row, a lot of Celtic fans turned against Peter Lowell and uh, I think it was right for him just to step down and, and take a couple of seasons away from it and uh, come back in. But Michael Nicholson, he seems to be the one that's maybe not as, maybe not as tight as Peter Lowell in terms of spending money. Yeah. So I think the Celtic supporters will be concerned because Michael Nicholson's heavily backed. You know, the, the board have backed uh, Ange Postacoglu, you know, with hard money, you know, funds. They've changed they, the strategy. Yeah, they've changed the strategy. They've maybe loosened the biscuit tin a wee bit, but yeah. uh, the, the, a lot of Celtic fans will be, you know, a wee bit concerned. But with Peter coming back in, maybe they'll go back to their, their frugal ways. Yeah, well, dare, dare I say, I, mean, <laughs> I know you're suggesting when he comes back, <coughs> I would like to suggest to you that he actually never left. Uh, I mean, that's the fact mm -hmm. of the matter. Yeah. He would have been in the back. I mean, for anybody to suggest that Michael Nicholson would walk into a job and suddenly not have the expertise of Peter Lowell there, um, for all the mistakes that he, that he and Neil Lennon and the board and maybe the players made in that season, his, um, his expertise... Um, would have been something that Michael would have leaned on and he would have still been in the background, you know. I think a number of people probably will look at it and say, well, wait a minute, he's the chairman this, and one of his sons is, you know, handling an, a number of the... the the transfer dealings, recruitment, yeah. the recruitment. So, I mean, they've got, they've got all bases covered, haven't they? Yeah, but I think if you looked at his financial record, I don't think anybody yeah. could question that at all. You know, the way, I mean, Tam's saying he was, you know, very uh, tight with the spending money, but I, I, I think behind the scenes, he was a wheeler dealer, and, and the, the deal only went through if it was good for Celtic Football Club, and that was his main aim, you know. So, I think if somebody sat down and looked at the players brought in and left, and tallied up the money side of it, then he'd be well ahead. Yeah, um, of course, uh, Ange Postecoglou has gone on record as <coughs> welcoming uh, the announcement of uh, Peter Lowell as the returning chairman this time, um, and uh, I think he reckons that will benefit the club as a whole. Um, Ange Postecoglou was indeed uh, alongside their latest signing, Kobayashi. There could be more to follow, could be people heading out, and this is what Ange had to say on the uh, Georgius Giacomacus speculation that he could be on his way from Celtic. 
have those kind of discussions. And ultimately, what I deal with is what I see every day. You know, and, you know, and uh, every player uh, trains presents himself here, and uh, that's what I deal with. If I see if there's any shift there, if people aren't unhappy, unhappy or you know, have got some issues, then I'll deal with it. But you know, right now, um, all I see is you know, the players here training and committed to us as a football club, and that's all that concerns me. Beyond that, in terms of yeah, their contracts and stuff, they've got representatives who look after themselves, I'll deal with the club, but again, if there are any issues, they'll come across my desk, but for me, they're, they're all sort of in the background, what's more important than these, what I say every day. I think the first thing we'll do is we'll phone Peter Lawwell and ask him if his club could send us the quality audio. Although there was an old time, uh, there was an old time where you actually used to be able to go to press conferences. But um, we're in the we're in the kind of a post-Trump era now of people trying to control the media. Um, so apologies for the sound on that. But I think the, the the main gist of what he's saying is he'll deal with the players on the pitch um, in the training. Everybody else can argue over their own contracts elsewhere. Yeah, and it's an interesting one with Giacomacchus because he's, I think his contract runs out in 2026, so he's still got another, I think, three years left. And I don't know, we don't know, we're not privy to the details of the conversations that were made when he signed. You know, it seems to be an, an idea of he was promised that if he'd done well in his first season, you know, Celtic would look at his contract and maybe bump his money up. And uh, that's what they're talking about just now. So they're obviously a fair way apart in terms of what he wants, uh, in terms of a new deal and what Celtic are prepared to offer. So. I think he's been really, really good for Celtic this season. I think he's been impressive. Um, I think he's a big, robust striker that uh, can play in the Champions League as well. So I think Celtic want to get that tied down. They want to get him, want a happy player. But at the end of the day, you know, he's still get he's still get three years left. So Celtic are holding all the cards here, you know, in terms of his contract and if, if they want to sell him. So hopefully they can come to an agreement and they've got a, they've got a happier player and he feels as if he's valued and he's up there with a. With the, the bigger earners at the club. Yeah, and, and the new signing, Yuki Kobayashi, uh, left sided centre half. So I think the general feeling is he's going to be the partner alongside Cameron Carter Vickers. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how long they take before they, they get him in. You know, sometimes it takes maybe three, four, five weeks and everybody starts saying, Where is he? Why is he not being in? He might just have to take time to settle into the style of play that Celtic have, get used to them in the training. It'd be interesting to see maybe we're, we're talking about players that leave, you know, Staff Hill seems to be a, a favourite with a lot of supporters, it'd be interesting if he's still there. But on the Gio Kamakis one, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Ange thinks there's another another player of a different level he needs. Yeah, that's I good, think Gio Kamakis will score goals in our league, but if their ambitions are to get back to the heady heights of, European football, I don't think it's Gio Kamakis that's going to take them there. Yeah, no, good point. Um, some people would say, is it Kyogo as well? But um, we'll wait and see how his team evolves and gets ready to return uh, to uh, football action in mid-December after we get the World Cup out of the way. Um, Des Halliday, take a chill pill, Des. He says, don't blame Trump for Celtic's poor recording in the press conference. <laughs> <laughs> It's a joke. <laughs> uh, Des, if you keep that up, you <laughs> might be able to join some Partick Thistle fans who are unhappy as well. <laughs> Nobody can take a joke these days, by the way. It's nope. so sensitive. Uh, Des, if you get a chance, don't come to one of my after dinners because <laughs> it's not the place for the for, for the weak minded. Um, thanks very much to so many people who offered their opinion. Only kidding you, Des, for God's sake. It's funny you should say that. I bumped into a guy the other day and he was saying he was at one of the dinners you were at. And uh, he had a raffle ticket, and he, it was a great prize, but he refused to go up and get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he was going to get slaughtered. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't remind us of uh, Peter and raffle tickets from after the oh, like mine. Oh, it's just the best. That thing, was, it? It honestly, was, it was your do, is Yeah, it was super. It was, it was great. magic. Um, yep, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's the worst thing about leaving your tickets out on the table, Tam. I'll just have a wee gander at it. Yeah, and then I thought, happy as Larry to collect, and you said, no, it's no use, the right number. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Anyway, from Celtic and their predicament to Rangers, a new dawn, a new man, a new vision, and I think Rangers fans hoping there's a bright new future ahead uh, with Michael Beale. It was uh, late last night that Michael Beale um, was allowed to talk to the mainstream media. Uh, we sent our man Adam out there to find out what all the fuss was about. Thanks, Peter. I'm outside of Ibrox Stadium tonight for Michael Beale's first ever press conference as Rangers manager. Beale was announced as the Ibrox club's 18th permanent manager 
earlier this week. His side currently sit nine points behind Celtic at the top of the Scottish Premiership. But Beal was very clear about what his goals are for this side. We need to win 56 as soon as possible. We need to improve our cup record, um, which obviously we slightly improved last year by winning the Scottish Cup. And we need, we, need to, we need to improve the identity on the pitch. That's what I feel. Uh, that's what the group of players feel as well. And I think at the moment, one or two players' value is probably not the reality of what it was six or eight months ago. That's damaging to the players, the football club and to the staff. So we have to improve that. You know, all the players in the building have got a lot of responsibility as well towards their own careers. So it's my job to uphold them to that and my job is to try and get the best out of them. And getting the best out of the individual will make a stronger team and stronger Rangers. And I'm excited to uh, get working with the boys. Just a matter of weeks ago, Michael Beale turned down Wolverhampton Wanderers when he was approached about their vacant managerial position. He could not accept the offer from the Premier League club because he felt loyal to Queen's Park Rangers. But when the Rangers job came up, he jumped at the opportunity. So we asked him today and he explained why he chose Rangers and not Wolves. It was the right moment for me to come back. And I think sometimes, you know, the vision of the people behind the scenes, it drives all the decision making. So the vision of what, the way that you want to play, it disrupt, drives your decision making in terms of recruitment, the way that you train. And so I believe in that. I believe in where this club's going and that's why I've come back. I want to be part of it. I was uh, jumping at the bit to get back up the road and get back in, involved in the football club. It's a big job ahead for Michael Beale, but what do you make of his comments, Peter? Do you think 56 is achievable under his supervision, whether that be this season or next season or at any point within his three-and-a-half-year contract? Is he the right man to close the gap on Celtic and take Rangers forward? What about his comments as well about why he chose Rangers and not Wolves? Was he right to stay at QPR at the time? Have circumstances changed? There's a lot to discuss about this appointment, but I'll leave it to you, the experts. Thanks to Adam there. It's only a matter of time before we are watching him sitting in this chair. <laughs> he's too good. Um, but, uh, you know, he's posed a lot of really good questions there. Uh, I mean, Michael Beale offered an apology to QPR's fans. don't think he needs to do that because at the end of the day, I think the only thing that a lot of people, you know, the last thing you need to do is start saying you're loyal, you're going to stay on camera. When yeah. life itself, when Rangers come calling, it's such a big club, you just can't turn it down. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's obviously that come back to haunt him. You know, he done an interview. Um, maybe, I think it was with a QPR TV saying that he's, you know, he's fully on board and he's and he's loyal to the team. And then I think thirty days or days later he, he leaves to go to Rangers. But you know, that, that that's the thing. He's he's obviously been at Rangers. He's experienced Rangers. He's seen how big the club is. The big European nights. You know, winning the league. He knows that Rangers are a massive club. And uh, I think that he turned Wolves down. Maybe looking to, to maybe get back to Rangers one day. And it's came quicker than he anticipated. So. Listen, you've got to give him give him a lot of credit for coming back up the road, and I think that he, I think he'll, I think he'll do well at Rangers. I think yeah. he'll do well at Rangers. I, everything I hear from from players, ex players, you know, is he's a very very good coach, and uh, I think if you can get them on the training ground and get them performing right and training hard, and he's got competition for places, then that will translate onto good results on the pitch. Well, the big uh, issue for me on this one, Ruffy, I mean, apart from anything else, a huge job for him, um, and I think everybody is uh, at this point saying, okay. All the hype, all the stuff you did in the background, I think Stephen Gerrard and Gary McAllister deserve all the credit. It's their job, it's their neck on the line. They offer the instruction to Michael Beale on how they want the team to play because the buck stops with the manager. But now Michael's in that position and the biggest issue for me was, is he going to get money? And Ross Wilson, the sporting director, says the board's going to back Michael Beale in that January transfer window if he wants additions. Yeah, well, the, the Rangers supporters will have to wait and see uh, how much money he's got to play with because that will determine what kind of players are coming in. You know, it'll be interesting. He never went on record to say X amount. You know, of course, he, he wouldn't do that anyway. But certainly he'll know what he's got and, and it might just be a certain amount that might bring one player in, it might bring two players in, he might have to get rid of some players. So I think the first uh, indication will be how much money in that pot is the first player who comes in and how much he's worth. Yeah, um, it's, I, I think the big issue for him is he's been very complimentary about the players who are there. So that immediate thing is, can he get the best out of Kent? Can he get a trick out of Morelos? 
does he want to get the trick out of Morelos and Kent or is it going to be taken out of his hands where they're in the last six months of their deal? I mean, right now, Tam, unless you're the most overly optimistic Rangers fan, you can't see them pegging back nine points with a Celtic collapse thrown in for <coughs> pleasure. You can't see a spark from a manager coming in. Mm -hmm. But there's big, there's big dilemmas over whether he keeps the two of them. I think that his first conversations when he goes in Very will be to sit the two down, you know, get them in his office and look them in the eye and say, do you want to be here long term? You know, and if the answer's yes, I think he'll try and thrash a, a new contract out for them. I think they'll, they'll try and push the boy out to keep them. If the answer's no, I think they'll try and get rid of him, you know, if, as soon as possible. I think they'll try and get as much money for them, but he's got to ask that question. He's got to look them in the eye and say, do you want to be here? Do you want to be part of Rangers? And, uh, and if, the, if the answer uh, is positive, then I think he'll keep playing them and, and he'll try and get a new contract. But if not, then I think he's got to get them out because that uncertainty is not good for the squad. You know, you get guys out of contract and get linked with clubs and different things. And uh, I think he's got to get that sorted out immediately. That's got to be his priority. Mm, uh, getting players back from injury, if he could get even one from the youth development that suddenly, if Lowry suddenly comes in and gets two or three games of a, a really good start, Ruffy, that would be a bonus as well. Plus, of course, he's going to have to look, at, you know, he'll, he'll know himself that he's got to try and get the best out of what's there. Goldson back from injury and then maybe look to, to I think, rejig the this, this side majorly in the summer. I think it's an ageing side. Yeah, as I, I think it's a midfield uh, where that's the engine of any club. You know, I think that's where they they need to get a bit of freshness in there. You know, and because uh, they've got two good fullbacks, they've got a good goalkeeper, and if Golson comes back, they've got a reasonable centre half, and put somebody else beside them, and that you've got Cholak up front. So it's the midfield's a jigsaw for me. It's I I I I think Davis and I think Arfield are wonderful players, but I think at this stage for Rangers are that they're on the bench players. The players you would want to come on, I think you 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 need really good quality in the midfield to take them somewhere else. Yeah, um, listen, James Skeen, who is on our feed, says if Rangers win on the second, then Celtic's heads will dip. Nothing is finished yet. And, and by the way, win the games before that. I was going to say, but not. But but let, let's just assume that they get a spark on it. You know. You're really heavily relying on a collapse of Celtic, which doesn't look like it's happening, certainly from the build-up to the break before the World Cup started. They looked as if they were going through the gears again. But out of that, if they could get a win, which is not beyond the realms of possibility, suddenly you've got that lift. If you can get the wins, you get to Ibrox. You've got a home game. You've got a new manager. You might have some news on you know, players that are suddenly back, available. There's a wee lift in the crowd. These games, Tam, you can never predict them. No, and I think if they can get it down to six or, or less, then it's game on again. The, the league title's back on, the race is back on. Um, but there's a lot of work to do before that. Um, you know, and both Celtic and Rangers will, will be wanting to win every game up until that game, you know, in January. And uh, if they do, then it sets up. Rangers have got to win it. You know, a draw is perfect for Celtic. You no know, nine points, keep that gap. There's no way back. You know, Rangers have got to win the next three derby games and then hope. Celtic slip up elsewhere, but it's a, it's a big, big ask. But I heard Michael Beale speaking yesterday, you know, about Tom Lawrence and Hadji, you know, and maybe Kamar Roof. You know, these are these are good players, and they're on their way back. So yeah. I think once you get, if you can get them in the team, particularly Hadji and Lawrence, you've got, you're adding more goals. And I, th I just think that's a, a, an area where Rangers have been far too reliant on Chola. You know, they're not getting enough goals from midfield or wide men, yeah. and they've got to, they've got to increase those numbers. And those, those two guys would help. I thought Lawrence was a big blow. I liked him. I yeah. liked the way he played, uh, Ruffy. Yeah, he, he fitted the system that they were playing. You know, and he looked uh, the more games he was getting, the better he was getting as well. So you're, you're right. I mean, the manager will be sitting there, and all my all managers have charts on the wall. And they've, they've, on that wall is all the players they've got and all the players on one side that are fit and all the players that are injured and the other. And he'll be looking at the chat saying, look, if I can get three of them back, you know, it'd be a bonus. Plus, if he's going to bring in two or three, you know, it just takes them to another level. Yeah, absolutely. You can always tell um, when we actually start talking about these guys. Oh, by the way, I can't. I mean, I can always tell in the feed when you start talking about Celtic and Rangers because usually, no matter what's said, then it just descends into, we're not bothering what you're saying, we're just going to hammer everybody else. <laughs> um, so, um, and by the way, on that point, and Tam loves this because we always like to say it as we head into 
each month. Thank you to so many of you who put their point across, whether they're Motherwell fans, Kilmarnock, Dundee United, Aberdeen, Celtic Rangers. Uh, they put it across in uh, a fair way and uh, certainly a very decent way. We try as much as possible, especially on the evidence of the last couple of days, to ban people who are abusive um, and don't conduct themselves in the proper manner. But that's basically because we um, constantly, since we set the whole thing up roughly 10 years ago, have tried to keep um, this all about the football and all about the opinions on football rather than descending into the gutter. So thank you to so many of you who do abide by that and join our football family and enjoy it. We do like a bit of banter. We do like getting caned um, every now and then. Uh, so by all means, you know, cane us. We're big enough and old enough, Ruffy, to take mm-hmm. the, the flack. I mean, not many people, I think, over the 10 years, Ruffy, uh, have given you flack because you've kind of a... You've sauntered through it because you're a housewife's favourite and everybody likes you. This is the uh, roughest month I've had for and you. And I don't do the tweet stuff. You don't, don't do, do social do, media. I don't do social media. <laughs> so I know. So I this go is going to be the roughest <laughs> month ever. In, in the 10 years we've been on here, this is the mm. roughest month ever. for us. I, I'm told by Tam that mm. some Partick Thistle fans have been calling for your head to get uh, out. Harvey, well, I don't read any of these, so I have to take Tam's work. I have to take Tam's work. One or two. Uh, uh, well, I don't want the big man going, we're not sleeping out. <laughs> you were devastated. I, yeah. I defended you, don't worry. Nah, good, <laughs> took it out of context. Yeah, you were replying, were you? Took it out of context. I, I spoke to some, one supporter. Took it out of context. You know, if, you, if you've got a full interview and you, you just chop one wee bit, and it makes you look bad, and I think that was poor. Oh, listen, he's 71, I think he's old enough and, yeah, and, and yes. tough enough to take all the flight that comes his way. Um, and thanks very much to to, to everybody um, who mentions uh, that point. You know, listen, you get flack along the way, you have to take it. Um, I'm kind of a marmite. I like the marmite attitude to, to myself, Tam. You know, you, you either like me or you hate me. There's no middle ground. Yeah, that's that's it. I mean, you've, you've, got, you've got to have an opinion. You know, you've got to have an opinion. If you're, if you're not got an opinion, then... You're in the you're in the, uh, the wrong line of work, and uh, there was I sent you the, the the thread from the other day when I was the <laughs> Rangers reporters. They had a thread about me on one of their websites, and it was yeah. quite interesting. But that was because. Oh, do you read things like that? No, oh. somebody sent me it. Somebody sent me the the copy of it, and uh, it was because that I dared to say that Hibs could get a result at Ibrox, and the Rangers yeah. fans were not happy with that. Not so. happy. Um, okay, this one's. Um, I don't want to delve into the back end of this story. It came out as disturbing. Um, obviously, there was an investigation uh, with no charges uh, towards Lee Griffiths. Um, obviously, the police were looking into some serious betting, uh, part, suspicious betting patterns, I beg your pardon, around a game between Dundee and Hearts uh, regarding yellow card roughy. I think, you know, Lee Griffiths just really needs to concentrate on the football, I think there's there just seems to be one controversy after another that's derailing any hopes of him getting yeah. back kicking a ball. Yeah, I think we all thought, you know, where I'm going away to Australia and then coming back and uh, going to Livingston and getting his head down. Uh, David Martindale was talking very highly of him in, in training and he was saying he was getting himself fit, <coughs> you know, and it looked as if he was going to go to another team. We'd heard that there was a couple of teams prepared to take him, but things like this, you know, just rear its ugly head, you know, and, and, and hopefully it is, you know, it's raw, it, he's not found guilty because if he is found guilty, it's just going to set him back again. Yeah, he's on, he's, he's going to, he will end up getting a ban, won't he? And that, that could influence people who's going to sign him, you mm-hmm. know, so I just I agree with Ruffy, hopefully it'll, nothing comes to, to pass on that. Yeah, um, Frank Green says, Hibs getting a result at Ibrox, no chance. Uh, thanks for your point there. Uh, we always like uh, everybody to offer their own point of view on this one. What about Magidi? Um, Aidan Magidi back for Hibs if he came back. I think that might soften the blow of Boyle. He's, he's a slightly different player. He's kind of a you know, tricky winger, got a trick or two, lovely bits of skill, can deliver into the box. And I think Hibs will need something to excite the fans. Uh, the, my only worry about it is I read a quote, you know, saying that he felt a little tweak, mm. that maybe it wasn't all right in his um, in his knee. But it, God, you, you, you can't rush you can't rush people back from the injuries. I've tried to come back a couple of times, and if something's not right, it'll, it'll break down immediately. So yeah. they've got to make sure he's ready. Uh, I know they're desperate. Listen, the Hibs fans are desperate to see him. You know, he started off pretty well. You know, in the in the League Cup games, he obviously picked up an injury and. They're desperate to get him back, but that would be that would be some powder keg for him to come back into Ibrox. <laughs> he would get a, yes. a good reception. 
I think they'd welcome him with <laughs> open arms. Welcome back to Scottish football, yes. Aidan. And uh, yes. I, I mean, at a push, I think they might remember his back catalogue. <laughs> yes. No, but I, 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 I think I would, listen, that would be, it would add a wee bit of spice to the fixture, wouldn't it, if Aidan came back in and played. But, yeah. you know, the Hibs need as many quality players as they can. Uh, and he is a, he's a, still a quality footballer. N- no, Nesbitt, needs, Nesbitt needs him. Nesbitt needs the supply. Yeah. 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 You know, if he's going to be back, you know, he needs somebody like him to give him the. The ammunition to do what he does. Um, and listen, the other good thing about it, I like um, a lot of people. Um, Des says McGeady's past it. Um, Gregor um, has emphasised, and I like the fact that sometimes if you're typing something, you have to type it two or three times to get the point across. Mm-hmm. And Gregor says, Peter, 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 <laughs> <laughs> McGeady is done, had it, passed it. Um, oh, listen, uh, the, the, the problem here is sometimes we elevate Scottish football above the standards that it really is at. And I have to say, Rafi, you know, Celtic and Rangers, you know, exceeded expectations, I think, and it was great that they were in the, the, the Champions League. It didn't turn out the way both of them wanted. I think the Celtic fans were pleased with the way they went about their business trying to play football, picked up a couple of points. Rangers was just a miserable Champions League. The rest of the clubs absolutely failed big time and you have a standard of player at the moment in Scottish football that it's nice to see the younger players coming through but it's not great. It's not great. We've got a long way to go to see a, 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 you know another step up again. Yeah, the, the other unfortunate thing about it is, Peter, when, when our good young players do come through at clubs, they're, they're picking them up, going to Italy. Yeah, down to England. Going, we're not getting a chance to see the cream of the football that's coming through the academies or, or anything like that. Because as soon as they come through, somebody identifies them and that's them away. Yeah, I mean that's why teams like <coughs> Aberdeen and Hibs and well, not particularly Hearts because they're doing particularly well. That's why they can't compete as much against Rangers and Celtic. Isolated instances where they will. But if they if they could keep a hold of all these young players, I know they're not going to be able to because the money they're getting is too much. But it, you can imagine Aberdeen if they could have kept hold of two or three of their young players. It would make them a lot better and a, and a stronger force to compete with the big two. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, OK, <clears throat> Aidan McGeady's probably got a year tops left in him. Um, so, but he's still got a trick. He can still do something better than some of the players that are playing in yeah. our game. He's st- he's, listen, his quality's still there. It's, it's his legs still there, and we'll find out. We'll find out in the next coming months if he's still got the legs and the energy, and we add a pace to get by people. But I think in terms of his quality, he, he's, he's still a quality footballer. But that's when you get. I think he's 30, 35, 36. When you get to that age, you're getting questioned every year. You know, you're done. Your, your legs have gone, and you you're don't just need keep an injury. people wrong. You don't and need he, an injury. And unfortunately for him, he's picked up an injury. Uh, which is going to make it even harder. <coughs> I'll tell you one thing, I think Brian makes a really good point. He says, McGeady will last longer than Lee Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to find out, Ruffy, because this is a heck of a run for Hibs over the next few weeks. Of course, everybody's uh, looking at their uh, teams and wondering if indeed they can make significant signings. Uh, sadly for St Mirren, although they've been playing really well and have, you know, they've taken the scalp of uh, Celtic and managed to get a point against Rangers at... Uh, New St Mirren Park, uh, but will they be able to strengthen that squad in the January transfer window? Sadly, for some Saints fans, they won't want to hear what Stephen Robinson has to say on that. I think we're, we won't be able to strengthen the financial constraints in the football club probably dictate that we won't be able to strengthen the squad at this moment in time. If anything, you know we've got a couple of the more experienced boys that might not have got the game time they wanted, um, which may have to be something that we look at. You know the to balance the books but it, you know we've got a good squad we're happy with the squad um, and unless you know things change or you know a lot of people leave the club then we probably will be with what we are well I don't think anybody's got anything to worry about with St Mirren and Stephen Robinson if they have to go with the squad they've got I'm quite impressed with them yep I think they've been the you know surprise package of the season for me I think I mean you look at St Mirren at the start of the season a lot of people a lot of pundits would have had them bottom two bottom three and uh, you know they're doing particularly well. You're running about the top six, and uh, I think they'd be wanting to finish in the top six this season after getting off to such a good start. And he proved at Motherwell that he was a good manager. Yeah. You know, I think it was down to Morecambe they came in for him and he went away, and he's come back. And I think he's, I think he knows Scottish football. He knows what it takes to build a team yeah. to be successful in the Scottish Premier League. And 
I think uh, I think he's doing that at the minute, and uh, I think if some have got any money, they will back him with it. But uh, listen, if they've not got any cash to bring anyone in, then if they've not got any cash. I think he's handled that very well as a manager. You know, at the beginning of the season, a man asks you for something, and if he, if you get what you want, and they, they back him, and he's got the players he's got, and they do well. He knows when the, the window comes if he goes back and they say, well, we've not got in. And he's held his hands up and saying, that's fair enough. I've done everything you've asked me to do. Yeah. Um, listen, one little point I want to get your thoughts on, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. uh, Falkirk have launched a, a, an initiative that if you give them £5,000, that's you get your season ticket secured for the next 10 years. Um, there's a few people biting at it. That's an interesting one, isn't it? It certainly is, you know, but it just shows you the, the climate that there's a lot of people, a lot of clubs out there have a, a loss in their accounts and they're thinking of every way possible to, to rectify that and that's certainly a good one, but uh, it'd be interesting to see many people have got £5,000 yeah, that they can, they can give up in this day and age. It's vitally important for Falkirk to get out of that league. I think that to sustain mm -hmm. full-time football, and they're getting good crowds, but to sustain full-time football and pay wages and staff and all that, it must be, it must be crippling them in the last couple of seasons stuck in that league. And it looks as if probably them firming will we'll get out of that league. And I'd like to see Falkirk get out it as well because they two should never been in that league. Yeah, absolutely. Falkirk, good club. Um, we'd like to see them uh, go back up the uh, divisions. Anyway, um, just before we go, a couple of things. Don't forget, we've got our Fandex World Cup competition ongoing. Come and join PLZ Soccer on Fandex for our FIFA World Cup 2022 Stock Exchange game. It's absolutely free to play and you have the chance to win cash prizes. You can buy shares in your favourite team and watch their stock price increase or decrease based on their real-life World Cup performances against the expected points tally set by Fandex. You can buy and sell as many teams as you like, as often as you like, with winners being announced after every round. The PLZ Soccer family are waiting for you on Fandex. Head to plzsoccer.com and click on Fandex World Cup 2022. Yeah, thanks to Adam and don't forget that uh, our reporters will be out and about when the domestic season kicks off again. Uh, Kerry and Adam and a cast of other additional signings. Uh, as ever, Ruffy, when it gets to a transfer window, we always like to make a few signings, bring in fresh faces. Yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, You'd look at his face as if he's do. getting binned. No! <laughs> No, not at all. No. You know, I think it's always good to, to freshen up yeah, uh, absolutely. any business. Absolutely. And over the 10... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good line, Ruffy. Calm yourself. Uh, over the 10 years, Ruffy, the majority of people that we've had through working at yes. PLZ are uh, now all broadcasting in the industry. Well, I was going to say that right at the beginning of the show when you were talking about the 10 years. And if you look back at the 10 years and you look at the people who have came through as in the 10 years and where they are now uh, is absolutely amazing. And the other thing for me is most of the stuff in the last 10 years that you've come up with, what's been original, has been pinched by other people. Yes, absolutely. There's a lot of them copied. Some of them even... There's, there's, there's still hope for me, Ruffy. Yeah, there's still hope for you. Listen, some of them even steal our logo and just put another name on it. Um, that's how embarrassing it's got for us. But we just, uh, we crack on because for every good idea that's stolen, we've, got, a lawsuit. A, we've got another thousand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, about, I thought about a lawsuit and then I thought to hell with it. Um, we've got another thousand ideas and some of the one-to-ones we've got coming up and some of the uh, unique video content we've got coming up. I know you're going to enjoy it. If you get a chance, tell your pals, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you're living not in the UK, but a fair distance away and you've got a swimming pool and a three-bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. phone us, we'll come out and do the show live there. Yep. Is that fair, Tom? Yeah, just digs. And I, take any money, just wanting digs. Absolutely. And I've told Vietnam is really, really nice. One of my friends went on holiday there. Yeah, the so I, we, uh, there's a hippie that follows, follows us from Vietnam, Ruffy. It'd be it's quite beautiful. happy to go there. It's supposed to be beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Would you be happy if we went... I mean, I know you loved Madrid. You loved Madrid. Yes. Would you be happy if somebody said, look, come and do the show out in somewhere else? Yes, it obviously yeah. depends where it is. Some, some, some are a bit further than others, yeah. you know, but if they're happy for us to come first class, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't hold your breath. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, this next one is um, the quiz. Yeah, which player holds the record for the most goals scored at World Cup finals? Do you know who it is, Ruffy? Ed Miller? Nope. Patty Stutter. Matty Stutter. No, it's Miroslav Klose. Oh. He's got 16 goals. Oh. So there you have it. Um, 
yeah, thank you very much to everyone who's uh, called us, and uh, obviously some of them have been very complimentary about us. Um, don't accept poor imitations. You'll get your opinion, you'll get your banter, you'll get, uh, of course, uncensored, unbiased, unmatched, and it's absolutely free, and it's on five days a week, and there's big news coming on some other programmes that we're going to offer you on PLZ Soccer. Download the app, you get all the breaking news at your fingertips. I can't say any more than that. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the football. We are certainly going to enjoy it. Thanks to Tam Ruffy from myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching.